Hi everyone, my name is Alicia of Miss Alicia Grace. I'm so excited to be filming my very first sew along for my Nomi pattern ME 2038. I can't believe I'm actually holding it. My dress comes in two views, view A, which is a three-tiered dress, and view B, which is a four-tiered dress. Summer is my favorite time of year. I live in Southern California, and so the inspiration behind my dress was pretty easy. I live in a region where we have wine country, and so my dress was a nod to where I live, but also a nod to the first place where I met Mimi G. I was working at a winery, and so if I was to be at the winery again, this would be the perfect dress for the winery. It's multifaceted. It can be just a fun, flowy dress. It can go to a wedding. You could design it for a bridesmaid dress. I'm also a teacher, so I wanted to look at it from the perspective of, okay, well, if I'm gonna sew something, I wanna be able to wear it at work. So we've got the high neck, we've got, it's bra friendly. Now this pattern might look a little daunting because it is four tiered or three tiered option, which means it does mean a lot of fabric. However, there's not very many notions. There's no gathering. I know this looks like a gather, but it's not gathered. It's very simple to construct. Today we're going to be sewing view A. So let's get started. On the back of the pattern, you will find the suggested fabrics and lining. Here, you will see the different types the pattern suggests. For this sew along, I'm going to be using a silky type fabric, and I'm going to be using it for both my main fabric and my lining fabric. You will also need some lightweight feasible interfacing and one 24 inch invisible zipper. I do wanna make a note for you to see, for dress A or B, you can only use 60 inch fabrics, and that's for your main fabric. Anything smaller and your tiers aren't going to fit on that fabric. So please make note that when you're purchasing fabric for this pattern, it must be 60 inch width. For your lining, definitely you can do a 45 inch, but because I'm using my main and my lining fabric is the same, I'm going to be using a 60 inch fabric for both. Pattern piece number one is the bodice front lining for view A and B. You're gonna cut one on the fold. Pattern piece two is the bodice back lining and you're going to cut two. Pattern piece three is the bodice front. Again, you're gonna cut on the fold, cut one. Pattern piece number four is the bodice back, cut two. Pattern piece number five is the skirt front lining. You're going to cut one on the fold. Don't forget to mark your darts. Pattern piece number six is the skirt back lining, cut two. Pattern piece seven is the skirt front A and B, cut one on fold. Pattern piece number eight is skirt back. You're going to cut two. This is where your zipper will be. Pattern piece nine is our collar. You're going to cut one on fold and one on lining. If you're using the fa same fabric for your lining and your main, then you would cut two on that. And then you're gonna cut two for interfacing because our neck's gonna be super strong to hold up all of this. Pattern piece number 10 is the flounce for uh, view A and B. Cut two on fold, don't forget your notches. Last but not least is pattern number 11. This is your lower skirt lining. It says for view B, I think this is a printing error because this is the lining that's supposed to be on view A and B. So just make note of that, that I believe that this is a printing error because you need this for the lower lining on view A and B. So I know it can be confusing because it looks like we only need 10 patterns, but we actually need 11 patterns for view A and 12 pattern pieces for view B. Before we get started sewing, we need to make sure we interface the two pattern pieces that we need to complete this project. So that's collar number nine, both the lining and the main fabric. I'm using the same fabric for the lining and the main. So both pieces get fused with interfacing. So be sure to do that before we start. Next, we're gonna take pattern piece five and we're going to transfer the darts onto the lining. The reason why I asked for darts is because I didn't want this dress to be like a tent. I wanted it, the lining to be close to the body so that it would give you a nice silhouette with the tears. As you can see, I've pinned both sides of the dart so that when I sew, it will hit both of the lines that I've drawn. So go ahead and take it to the machine and sew up your darts on both sides. Once you sew in both darts, you're going to go to the iron and press towards the middle. So go ahead and do that and come back. Next, I'm going to take pattern piece six, which is my back lining and match it up with my pattern piece five that we just put the darts into. You can see I'm using a silky type of fabric and it's already fraying. 
So what I'm going to do is serge these pieces as soon as I finish. So go ahead and pin all the way down and then do this on both sides and we'll sew together. I would like to overlock my side seams together so that it prevents any fraying. We are going to go ahead and set aside pattern pieces five and six to the side and grab pattern piece eight. So you should have two back pieces of pattern piece eight. This is the flounce. What we're going to do first is stay stitch the top of the flounce so that it keeps its shape, especially if you're using a silky fabric like myself, it will have the tendency to stretch. So we wanna make sure we stay stitch that so it stays in shape. Once you've stay stitched the top uh, curve of the flounce, what you wanna do is line up your two back pieces face to face you want to find the notch that's at the bottom edge. It's about six inches up from the bottom edge. And then you're going to mark two inches above the notch and two inches below the notch to reinforce this notch because this is where our zipper is going to land in a few more steps. And so we want to really reinforce this area. We marked two inches above that zipper and two inches below that zipper to reinforce this area. Then at this notch, we're going to mark an inch below and we're going to clip into there. Don't clip on the stitch line, clip close to it. And that way we can go ahead and press this open. So this will be pressed open and then this will be pressed open as well. And we will eventually insert our zipper onto this flounce. Okay, this part is not in the directions, but I found when I made my two samples that this was the easiest way to clean finish. So the directions don't mention anything about clean finishing um, pattern piece eight right here. But I found if you serge it right now, then we can set it aside and it's good to go. And that's primarily with a lot of the pattern. There's no mention of clean finishing. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and press this open and press this back and then set it aside and get the next piece. Next, we're grabbing pattern piece seven. And again, what you should do on this flounce is stay stitch the top so that it doesn't stretch. So go ahead and do that and come back. Okay, now that we've stay stitched up top, we're going to take our two pattern pieces from eight that we just connected. And we're, again, we're going to connect these at the side seam. So over here and so, and over here and so. Once you've attached the flounce seven to flounce eight, go ahead and clean finish the way you would like. I just did overlocking on both sides. Next, we are going to baste all the way around our flounce edge at 5 8 inch to create our narrow hem. That 5 8 inch baseline is acting as a guide for you at the iron. So what you'll do is go ahead and fold and press and roll it up to that stitch line. And then you're gonna roll again to help create our narrow hemline. And this will create a really beautiful flat hemline. So you go ahead and go to the iron and do that all the way around. If you have a narrow hem foot, I would recommend doing that option. This is quite tedious. However, I am trying to follow the directions to the best of my ability. If you don't have a narrow hem foot, then this would be your alternative. So again, I'm just going and folding the edge to that baseline I created. Baseline, I'm talking like it's basketball. Baseline. And then we're going to roll that up. And then you will stitch along here to create your narrow hemline. So it will look beautiful, but this is so much easier with the narrow hem foot. Once you've finished the hemline on the flounce, you are going to take the lining piece that we completed earlier with the two darts, and you are going to clip the skirt flounce to the lining. Now, the wrong side of the skirt to the right side of the lining. So we are going to slip this in between, and we want the wrong side of the skirt to the right side of the lining. So we're gonna pin these two together and then once we pin the two together, we're going to stay stitch them. So let me pin it together first and then I'll show you how we're gonna sew it. Okay, 
Okay, so we pinned our flounce to our lining. We put the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the flounce and we pinned all the way around. And now we're going to sew. For our next step, we're grabbing pattern piece one, which is the bodice front lining. We are going to make a stay stitch along the neckline so that it does not stretch. And then we are also going to complete our two darts. So I have already drawn in where my dart placement is going to go. Right here, right here, right here, and right here. So you should have four darts on pattern piece one. I'm gonna go ahead and stay stitch the neckline first, and then I will complete the four darts. All right, once you press your darts, remember we want the darts on the sides to press down and we want the darts here to press towards the center. So we have our pattern piece one and we're going to now take pattern piece two. On pattern piece two, you can go ahead and stay stitch at the top of both pattern piece twos. So you should do stay stitching on both pieces. Then we're going to lay these face to face, matching the notches and placing them on each side. So we're going to sew up the side seams. Next, we're going to grab piece three, which is the upper flounce for the top, it's the front, and then piece four, and you should have two pieces because these are the back flounces. So what we're going to do is open up the back flounces. I need to press my fabric. And we are going to connect the back flounce to the front flounce on the side seam. So same thing as usual. We're gonna go ahead, match up all notches, connect, go ahead, match up all notches, and sew along. Just like we did with the last flounce, we are going to baste 5 eighths of an inch so we can create that narrow hem. Again, if you have a narrow hem foot, I would highly recommend switching over to that, but I'm trying to stay as true to the instructions as possible. So we're gonna do it this way. So 5 eighths inch um, and then basting stitch. So remember, you don't need to back stitch, and then go to the iron and we'll roll up to create that narrow hem. Next, we will be attaching the flounce, the second tiered flounce, to the upper tier lining. So this is going to be attached face to face. Now we've already basted these together, so now we are going to attach so that they come together. So you'll go ahead and pin all the way around and then sew all the way around. Now that we've pinned all the way around, we are going to sew five eighths of an inch to attach our front lining to our second tier. Let's go sew five eighths inch all the way around and come back. Okay, now that we've attached the bodice lining to the flounce, the second flounce and its lining, what we're going to do to make this simple is turn this inside out. So we're going to see the guts of the dress. And we've turned it inside out. I also clean finished mine when I was at the machine and you can press it up. All right, so next, this is turned to the wrong side. So we see the pretty side is facing the inside and now this is the wrong side. And we are going to attach our top flounced layer. And how we're going to attach it is the right side, so the pretty side, to the wrong side. Okay, pretty side to the wrong side. So you can see here, it's the pretty side to the wrong side. And what we're going to do is pin all the way along the armholes. So we're gonna attach all the way along the armhole, pin and sew on both sides, 5 eighths of an inch. Once both armholes are pinned, you're going to take it to the machine and sew three eighths stitch line. So for the majority of the pattern, it's a five eighths seam allowance, but here on the armholes, it is a three eighth inch seam allowance. 
Okay, so I just finished sewing three eighths of an inch all the way around. I now flipped my dress back to the right side. So here you see the second flounce. This is the lining and then the top flounce is on the inside. So what I'm going to do is flip it so that it now faces the outside. And again, we're gonna flip it over here, bring it back. And then flip it over here and bring the flounce out. So the next step, as you can see here, we have our two flounces. So cute. So the next step is to go to the ironing board and you're going to iron these down all the way around. And then we are going to top stitch at 3 8 an inch so that this lays flat. But first press it and I recommend rolling it. Press it so we get that nice clean edge and then we're going to create a stitch line at 3 8 all the way around and all the way around. So first to pressing. Once you've pressed we're going to go ahead and top stitch the two armholes. So go ahead and do that. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance but you can do it smaller than that if you'd like. It's just a preference at this point. So this is what it should look like when you've top stitched all the way around. Again, I used a 3 8 You could go smaller if you like. I don't really mind the stitching showing because my print is so loud. Um, but go ahead and do that to both armholes. For this next step, what I'm doing is creating a basting stitch to baste the outer flounce and the lining together at both the necks and the backs. So you can see here I just basted it together so that both layers are li laying together. We also, in preparation for the zipper, need to baste not only the back neck together, but we need to baste the entire flounce down to the back lining. And so what I'm going to do is pin both sides together. I'm also going to, once they're pinned, make sure that the flounces are hitting at the exact same spot on both sides of the back. That way when we zip up the dress, the flounces aren't like, uh, or, uh, you know, they line up and they match perfect. So now that I've pinned it to ready to baste it, I wanna make sure that they're matching here on the end. This looks perfect. We're ready to baste in preparation for attaching the collar and then the zipper. Next, we're gonna grab our two collar pieces and we're going to put them face to face and pin them at the top. The two notches should be down here. Don't forget to mark your dots. We will eventually be sewing from here to here and here to there. So if you haven't already marked your dots, please do that now using your pattern piece. So I just finished stitching together the edge of the collar. Again, remember the two dots and the notches are on this side. We're stitching up the top side of the collar. Uh, this is a 3 h inch, 3 8 inch seam allowance. The next step, we will clip into the curve. So we want to clip, but we don't want to clip on the stitch line. We want to get as close to the stitch line, but not on the stitch line, otherwise we'll create a hole. So we're just clipping in the curve all the way around. Okay, for this next part, I had to look up what the definition of the word scant means, because in the directions, the pattern directions, it tells us to make a scant line. Now, if you're like me, I'm a teacher, but sometimes, you know what? I tell my students, I don't know, let me look it up. And that's what I had to do here in this situation. So scant means barely sufficient or adequate. So I'm just gonna pump up my stitch line to about a five to make a scant line it needs to be at 5 8 inch so almost like a, a basting stitch kind of I don't know that's what I'm assuming so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a scant line of 5 8 and we're gonna do this on both sides of the collar and it's to make sure that when we fold it in when we're creating our collar that we actually get that 5 8 down so I'm making the scant line here on both sides go ahead and go to your machine and <laughs> create those scant lines now that I've created my scant lines, I'm going to press the seam allowance of the collar to one side and go ahead and create a edge stitch 
along the seam line to keep that seam allowance on one side. With right sides together of the collar, we're going to find those dots that we have created. So here's the two markings on the dots and then on this edge of the collar. And now we're gonna go over the top of our scant line and we're going to create a regular stitch line, make sure to reinforce really well at the dots. And so we're gonna sew from here to here. All right, so we have created a stitch line from dot to dot. I need to clean up these threads. For the next step, we're going to clip in at the dots all the way up to our stitch line. Same thing on the other side. Two knot through the stitch line. And then we're going to trim this down to 3 8 inch. Again, on the other side, we are going to trim down to 3 8 inch. So you can see here, it's trimmed down to 3 8 and it's trimmed down to 3 8 Next, we are going to turn our collar right side out. So we'll just go ahead and push it through. going to look like this. What you're going to do is take it to the iron and we want to go ahead and press it. So I've taken it to the iron, I've pressed it. Now that I have my top and my edge stitch along there. So this is now going to be our collar that we connect to our dress. Now remember, there should be the two dots there and the two dots there, and we're going to match it up with the dots on our bodice. When connecting, you wanna make sure that you're not just placing the whole neckband on it. You want to leave this open because eventually what we're going to do is fold on that scant line and then hand stitch so it looks like a clean finish. So we only want to connect one side of the collar, not both. So as you're pinning, make sure you're only grabbing three layers and not four. Make sure to pin at the notches and do that for all three sides. All right, just to recap. So I've connected the collar band, just one side of it because the side will eventually fold over and we'll stitch in the ditch to clean finish. So we're just stitching the three layers together, not the four layers together. Go ahead and sew out a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Next, we're going to trim our seam lines, um, the stitches we just put in. And we're gonna do that on all necklines. So go ahead and trim all your necklines. Remember, we're only trimming the seam allowance, not the part of the collar that we're gonna fold under. Okay, now that we've clipped our seam lines, what we're going to do is fold at that scant line. I'm, I'm gonna always say scant now for the rest of my life. We're gonna fold at that scant line and we're gonna go ahead and fold up and pin because we are going to stitch in the ditch. So I'm gonna fold up and make sure that it's covering. And then I'm going to pin. And I'm just gonna pin like this so I can see my pin from the other side. 
So when we pin, we're gonna be doing a stitch in the ditch, which is along here, and we're gonna stitch in the ditch, and it should hit right here and cover. So this will create a clean finish where you won't have any stitch lines on your collar band. So now that we've pinned all the way around the neckline, this is what it should look like. And again, we are covering up so it looks like a clean finish. And what we're going to do is stitch in the ditch and that will create a nice catch it on this side and create a stitch line on this side. All right, so go ahead and go to the machine and do that. All right, now that we've stitched in the ditch, it is now time to attach the zipper. Okay, now you'll take your invisible zipper. We're looking for a 24 inch invisible zipper. And the first thing that we wanna do before we attach it is open it up. If you notice how the teeth here are rolled over, we wanna press them open so that it lays flat and not curved. So you're just gonna take your iron and press along the teeth and do that for both sides. And you can see the difference here. See how this is pressed open and that's still curved. So we wanna do that all the way down for both sides to open up our zipper teeth. Next, you wanna get your invisible zipper because we're gonna be attaching our zipper to our bodice. And I love this kit from Madam Sew. So shout out to that. But this is the invisible zipper I use for my home sewing machine. Now there are so many fabulous tutorials on YouTube about how to install an invisible zipper, but I am gonna follow the instructions step by step. Um, the first step is to, again, press open your invisible zipper. So we already did that with the iron. Then we're going to place the invisible zipper onto our bodice. Again, this is 24 inches, so it's really hard to see it in the whole shot. But we're going to place it. And then I like to use a needle and thread like the pattern instructions suggest to baste down the zipper first before we sew. That way the zipper won't move. I feel like when it's 24 inch long zipper, um, pinning can get a little scary because it could, the zipper could get haywire. So I recommend basting. Um, if you have a different alternative way of installing an invisible zipper, then go for it. But I'm gonna do it the long way. Okay, so zippers are super tricky and I'm gonna do my best to be a good teacher. But what we're gonna do is put the zipper with the teeth facing down. So the zipper head's facing down. And what we're going to do is take the left side and we're gonna place it on this side of the dress. Now I know you're like, well, that seems funky, but that's okay, this is what we're doing. So I like to line it up up here with the plastic at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is hand baste the zipper all the way down out of frame because it's 24 inches, but all the way down, I'm gonna hand baste. Okay, so come back after you do that step. All right, so as you can see, I've hand basted with needle and thread, and now we're gonna take it to the machine and sew on just one side of the zipper. All right, so we finished sewing. So you can see here, there's the stitch line. Um, I can remove these basting stitches after the, I like the placement of the zipper. Okay, so after we've installed one side, the directions and say to flip the dress inside out. Okay, now that we've turned it out, we're gonna grab the zipper and it naturally just kind of opens the way that we need it to go. So again, the teeth go on the inside and we're gonna line it up with the metal, well, this is plastic the plastic piece up top. And then again, we're gonna baste and make sure that it matches right here and at our collar, because those are the two places where it could go really wonky on your zipper if you don't intentionally match it up. Okay, so I basted the other side. I haven't sewn it in yet, but what I wanna do is make sure that it lines up so you can tell this side's sewn and this side's only basted. But my collar looks good, and then I come down here and I check to see if that matches up, and that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the other side now that I've basted it and checked my work. <laughs> so go ahead and sew the other side and come back. All right, so once you're happy with your zipper, I love the way that they match up, and my tear, my flounce matches up, so that's perfect. 
So what I'm going to do is turn in inside out while it's still zip, zipped up. So go ahead and remove all of the basting uh, stitches that you put in and then come back. All right, so with the dress turned inside out, we removed the basting stitch. Down here, the zipper is still kind of flappy, but we do need to close up our lining. And so what we're gonna do is stitch right here where it meets and then close it up quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we're just gonna stitch down and close it on up. Careful not to grab the line underneath, or the flaps rather. All right, the last step for the zipper is to get rid of these zipper tapes. So I'm going to push it open this way. So you can see I pushed it open. Now I'm going to push it over and then I'm going to make a stitch line on this side. So then when it's stitched, it's clean finished. So this is called a slip stitch. And that's what we're gonna do to both sides to the upper edge of the zipper. So go ahead and do that and come back. And now your collar is complete with it slip stitched. Next, you're going to grab your two pattern pieces, 11s, and we're going to match them up on the sides, notch to notch, and go ahead and sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This is the inner lining. Once you finish sewing up your two side seams on pattern pieces 11, go ahead and clean finish the way you would like. And then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and create that 5 8 inch seam allowance like we did on the previous tier lining so that we can then fold it over to create the seam allowance. So we're doing the narrow hem again. Now we're taking those two pattern piece 11s and creating that narrow hem. So I am just creating a stay stitch at 5 eighths of an inch. So I can repeat the process like we did with previous hem lines where we're going to roll and roll to create that narrow hem. If you have the narrow hem foot, this would be a good time to use it. Next, I'm going to take my two pattern piece 10, which are my big flounces. I'm going to stay stitch at the top so that this doesn't stretch out, and then I'm going to connect them at the side seams. These flounces are so big I can't even fit them in frame. Alright, now that we've stay stitched our pattern piece tens, we're going to sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance down each side seam, and then you can clean finish how you'd like. Alright, now that I've sewed up the side seams to the flounce pattern piece 10, I'm going to do the same as I have done on my other flounces, and I'm going to create that 5 8 inch seam line or basting stitch so that I can create that narrow hem when I go to the iron. And so just like we completed on our other narrow hem line, we're going to go ahead and press up to that stitch line of 5 8 and create the first fold. And then once we go all the way around and create the first fold, then we'll fold it back on top of itself to create the narrow hem. Do this to both pattern piece 10 flounce and pattern piece 11 lining because that is the bottom of our dress. We're not going to be connecting the last tier. After you finish the narrow hem for both pattern pieces 10 and 11, you're going to go ahead and put the lining pattern piece 11 inside of the flounce pattern piece 10. And we are going to create a basting stitch. But first, I'm going to match up my side seams of pattern piece 10 and pattern piece 11. So I'm going to match up the side seams and pin. And I'm going to do that to the other side. Again, we want the face of the lining to touch the wrong side of the flounce. Okay, matching up my side seams again, and pin, and then I'm going to match the notches in the middle, and pin, and my notches in the middle, and pin, and I'm going to do that for the back side as well, 
and I'm gonna pin all the way around. And then I'm going to do a basting stitch so we can connect these two to the bodice. All right, so go ahead and baste pattern pieces 10 and 11 together, the lower tier, the third tier lining and the third tier flounce. Once they're basted together, we're gonna attach it to the bodice and then we're done. All right, so I'm gonna turn that bodice and lining that I just basted together, I'm gonna turn it inside out. And I'm gonna grab the lining from the second tier. Now, this is kind of confusing because there's lots of flounces, but I'm going to grab it and pull that lining in between. Then I'm going to attach the lining to my basted tier. And I'm gonna connect at the side seams first. So again, I'm grabbing the lining, putting it face to face. If you can hear that fly, I've been trying to kill it all night. So I've connected the side seams. I'm gonna go ahead and match up the notches and I'm gonna connect it all the way around my notches, gonna connect it all the way around and then sew five eighths of an inch and my last tier is going to be on the dress. All right, we're sewing on that final tier of the dress and then it's complete. Again, another five eighths inch seam allowance and we are done. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed making this dress. Please remember to tag me at Miss Alicia Grace. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I can't wait to see the fabrics you use and I can't wait to see where you wear it. Be sure to check out my design and all of my fellow Nomi pattern designers on simplicity.com and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all of our creations that are coming out in future collections. Until my next pattern, 